Hello everyone, I'm Mark Cook, I'm the CEO of Shiny Shoe, and we are the creators of Monster Train. Welcome to another developer stream. Today is January 21st, 2021, and we will be continuing to look at the upcoming Last Divinity DLC that we've been talking about uh, over the last few streams this year and late last year too. Um, so today we are going to be playing the Echo Rite, who is the exiled champion uh, in the new Wormkin clan. So it's going to be an opportunity to like look a little bit more at the details of what's going on with that character. And for those who haven't really seen how the Wormkin clan works, we'll be able to do more of that. Um, so yeah, we'll take a look in the details of that. As always, I'm happy to answer any questions. And we do have a couple of other things to show off with regards to new tuning changes that I think will be interested to, uh, to all players. So with that said, let's get started with first an admission from me, which is, I guess, good or bad, depending on your perspective. I have not personally played Echo Right. So the good news is, is that if you haven't either, or if you only played it a little bit when we ran the public test, it's an opportunity for us to learn together. On the negative side, if you have detailed questions about how it works, I can't answer it. Because uh, <laughs> I'm just gonna be learning that uh, that character for the that champion for the first time as well. Thankfully, though, there's almost always, and I think there will be today, other members of the development team uh, in chat. So if you have questions, they can answer it. Uh, and folks from the private beta as well, who I'm sure will be trolling my decisions the entire time as we go through the run. Uh, but with that said, let's jump over to the game. All right, so we've got the new Last Divinity main menu and everything hot and new about that. Um, like I said, we're going to play the Echo right. So let's go over and look at him. It's this little bug dude here. Um, we looked at these two weeks ago, I think, when I was streaming. But these are the upgrade paths, just to kind of refresh my own memory and uh, think about it ahead of time before we start our run. We've got the Shell Smith path which is all about etch and armor, and etch is a new trigger that triggers when a card is consumed on this floor. We've got the Marsh Lord path. Upon summon, he summons one bog deep cocoon with 60 extra health, which when it hatches, summons a bog wormling. If you haven't seen the hatch mechanic before, um, yeah, he's got an etch trigger, remove three shell from eggs. So eggs have shell, shell has to be removed before the egg can hatch which then is going to pop out a big Chungus unit there. And then we've got the Repeater Path, Resolve, Return two Random Consume Spells to your hand at level 3. Um, so yeah, we can get our Consume Spells back. So you can see how there's some synergy on these things. All right, cool. Uh, let's go to the start of a new run. And even before we start one, there's one thing I want to show here that's new. We've changed what some of the Covenant levels do. So, of course, with regards to the Last Divinity DLC in general, there's some new stuff going on um, for folks who own the DLC. But we've also made some changes to two of the high-impact um, existing Covenant levels that I think all players will be interested in. And I don't think these changes were in the public test, so this is new stuff. Let's talk about Covenant level 10. Covenant level 10 used to be when you summon a unit into the top floor of the train, they come in dazed, which punished certain strategies more than others. We've changed it to when you summon a unit into the top, the first friendly unit played in the top floor each turn, they get Ember Drain 1, which essentially is a negative impact for all, we think, more strategies or all strategies equally. Um, so. So far, it seems like uh, our players in the private beta seem to think that this is a good change. So we, we're, you know, like I, any tuning changes is still like subject to final kind of verification and feedback before we go uh, and actually ship this update. But that is where we have currently changed Covenant 10. So it's going to feel like a big change. Um, Shaheen asks, is there a strategic benefit to applying Ember Drain to enemy units? If not, what is the reason for implementing this mechanic into the game? Um, so there are, I think there's no real reason to put Ember Drain on an enemy other than being able to like uh, cast a spell that causes it to happen. Um, and philosophically, for many things, we've like 
intentionally not restricted the player from doing things that seem like, well, 99% of the time you wouldn't want to do this. Like 99% of the time you don't want to hit your own units with direct damage spells, but sometimes you do because something like an encant trigger uh, can be beneficial for whatever strategy you are running. Um, so in general, we don't often restrict things that seem weird uh, because there are sometimes edge cases where you want to do them. And in those edge cases, when you find out that you can do them, it feels good to the player. All right, let's look at Covenant 20 also, and then we'll do one more thing that I want to look at before we move on into the uh, into the battle, or into the run, I should say. All right, Covenant 20 used to be remove one capacity on a random floor, um, and now it is remove one capacity on the middle floor always. Uh, and so the thinking behind this change is about the threats that are kind of present in the three main rooms of the train. Um, and kind of trying to, to balance those out more. So at Covenant 10, we've got the top floor, first unit summoned, gets Ember Drain. Now with this change at Covenant 20, always the middle floor has less capacity. And then the first floor always has the threat of like taking enemy damage first. So they all have like some unique impact uh, to, to the player for, um, you know, in each floor is kind of, rather than like this used to be random, so it could also hit the bottom floor or the top floor, like kind of doubling the impact of the challenge for that. So we're playing with this change. So far we think it's good. It'll be interesting to see how it pans out as we get more data about it. But those are the two kind of covenant changes I wanted to look at. There's another thing that I want to look at with regards to Echo Right. And it's something that players noticed on one of our previous streams or in the public test is that all the other exiled champions, they've got the exiled symbol on them somewhere. You know, it's kind of like a recurring theme. So um, oh, what's her name? Shardtail Queen's got it right here on her big skirt here. Uh, and, you know, all Wild and Tin's got it in his armor. But Echo Wright didn't have it. So, of course, we wanted to get that right. Listening to player feedback. We've now got that here. Um, check this out. It's subtle. It's subtle. It's inside the little crystal anvil or motorcycle or whatever people are calling this. There's a little glowy exiled symbol in there. So thank you to our eagle-eyed players who caught that. We've definitely updated that. We want to be consistent and make sure uh, you know all the lore and everything is making sense here. So I appreciate it. All right, so why, let's try to play at Covenant 20, just so that we can experience the impact of the new changes. Um, and you can see how bad of a player I am. Uh, we'll, of course, be going with the Echo Right, who starts, his starter card is Echo Break, deal one damage per charged Echo, which we gain by playing infused cards. If you're unfamiliar with the Wormkin, it's one of the kind of key new elements of the clan, uh, and we'll see how that works in just a minute. In terms of our allied clan, you know, I don't really know who would be good. So why don't we just go random and we'll see what we get. All right, we got Stygian Guard exiled, it looks like. Okay, Talos, Fell, and we've got Consume Seraph. And our starting cards, we've got Echo Infusion. Extract one. Lose a charged echo after you play this card. If you cannot, the card cannot be played. So, okay, and we get plus 10 health onto the target we cast it on. What's the tip say? Stat changes persist for the duration of the battle. All right, we got flash freeze, direct damage and frostbite. Broken memories consume. Return a consumed spell to the top of your draw pile. Uh, oh, one other thing I just want to mention for those eagle-eyed folks as well. Uh, this build has a bug in text rendering that we're, we're fixing. It just was introduced yesterday. Uh, some of the text is spaced out more than it normally is, so just know that's unintentional. All right, return a consume spell to the top of your draw pile. Also has consume. All right. Uh, for those unfamiliar, the worm can always start with the worm tooth um, so that your clan, st clan starter cards are infused. One card in each draft pack will be infused. Um, and so what infused means, infused is a special thing that cards have. When played, 
the current floor gains charged echoes. And this is like a new resource in battle that only the Wormkin has access to. Um, and then it is used for abilities like Echo Infusion, which requires us to have some charged echoes to be able to cast. Summer1401 says, what's these echoes you speak of? It's also known as candy. Some people call this symbol <laughs> that we have here, lose candy. Uh, but yes, they're called charged echoes. Um, <clears throat> Mars Greek God says, question, can you not get no artifact it uh, H-mint with the matchment enhancement. I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, if you can attachment artifact attachment with them. Um, I don't know what that question means. So if you could clarify, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Binkley echo, right? Is a she, right? Yeah, I think you are correct. Let's see if the lore says. I suppose it should be no surprise that the shard souls protecting the exiles are one and the same as the echoes found in the Wormkin's care. I'd understood the trapping of souls to be Talos' idea, and that still seems accurate. But the transfer of knowledge back out of these shards was created millennia ago by now extinct kinhost intelligence. Was the Echo Rite's voluntary exile a sort of last stand or part of something larger? Well, that doesn't clarify, but... The voice actor is a she, so let's assume that Echo Wright is a she. Somebody else who knows for sure from the dev team can clarify in chat. Ah, Mars Greek God, can you get the no artifact achievement with them? Um, I believe an exception was made. Marmo, if you're in the chat, do you remember? I vaguely remember us thinking about that and putting in an exception for it. I don't know for sure though. Let's see if somebody else does. All right. Um, so just to run through for anybody who may be seeing this video that isn't familiar with what The Last Divinity does, uh, the DLC. So in addition to adding the Wormkin clan to the game, we also have changed a bunch of things on the map. So there are these new divine reward nodes and the divine temple, which we'll see what that does uh, and so on and so forth. There's new places you can go. When you take these new types of rewards, you gained something called pack shards. If you have 100 pack shards and you are able to beat Seraph, there's a new final battle against the boss called the Last Divinity, which is the name of the DLC. Um, but pack shards, the kind of risk reward of taking them is it makes the game more difficult. Battles get harder, enemies get powered up. Uh, so there's a kind of a, a dance you have to play about you know, do you take more to get more powerful, but then you also have harder challenges to overcome. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Uh, Mar Marmo says an exception was made for Wormtooth, so you can still get the no artifact achievement even when playing Wormkin. All right. Let us pick up our rewards. So from Herzl's Horde, we can either take Titan's Claws. At the end of a turn, frozen cards are reduced to zero until played or discarded. I don't think we have any way to freeze cards right now. Nope, not yet. Uh, and Carving Koruska. I'm sure I mispronounced that. When a card with Extract is played, gain one Ember and one Charged Echo. We have cards with Extract, right? We have Echo Infusion. Let's try that. That's a new Wormkin artifact anyways. All right, let's check out our Champion upgrade. So we got the Repeater and the Marsh Lord Paths. So return a random consume spell to your hand, which seems like that could be interesting with broken memories. Can it return itself, I wonder? Um, <clears throat> and the Marsh Lord path where we summon the Bog Chrysalis at level one, uh, which is this eggshell hatch thing. Um, Interesting. I don't know which one we should do. Will the DLC release on console at the same time as PC? Uh, from Sir William 88 and others, uh, the answer is yes, it will. So we are going to be releasing on all platforms at the same time. 
We're not allow announcing a release date today just to get past that question. Um, we will as soon as we can. So hopefully we will be announcing a release date soon. All right. So which one do we want to go for? Which one do we think has more synergy with our starting cards? Repeater or Echo Right? You know, they both sound interesting. We don't have a lot of consume cards right now to trigger etch off of, though. Hmm. I'm going to try the repeater. I'll give it a shot. I don't know. I mean, neither, uh, neither feel like they were going to do much for us early game. But let's try it. Let's try it. I want to try that. Uh, Darkest Tempest asks, so does the last divinity itself have one single enemy layout or is it different for each run? That I don't know. Uh, Dakarnix, are you in the chat? Can you answer that one? All right. Um, and just to show for folks who haven't seen this before, let's take the Divine Horde, which is going to give us some pack shards. We get to choose from three artifacts here. Uh, wing clippings and jack strips already existed in the base game. Conscription notice is new in the Last Divinity DLC. When you first summon your champion, gain a random unit card with plus 10, plus 10, minus 1 ember, and minus 1 capacity. That sounds interesting, so let's definitely go for that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. All right, the last divinity, go back to Darkest Tempest's question. Last divinity has multiple different options for each wave is the answer. Thank you for the assist there. Okay, let's start the battle. Okay, the gathered clergy. We've got the swarming clergymen. Um, and there's this new threat level in indicator uh, in the pre-battle intro here, um, which is a kind of measure of how threatening this battle is going to be based on how many pack shards you have. Um, so 15 pack shards at the ring one of hell is a medium threat level. So we're going to see some enemies that are going to be powered up by the pact um, and then they look a little bit different and their stats are different and they can have different abilities and so on every enemy in the game has a possible kind of upgrade that can be applied um, so we'll see i i think i'm too afraid at covenant 20 and with pack shards to take the uh the trial so i'm not going to do that all right so we got our penalty of the floor capacity reduced by one here um and remember, when we play a unit up here, we're going to get Ember Drain on it. So Echo Wright has Resolve, and he's got 25-5 stats. When I play my champion, I'm going to get the Conscription Notice is going to trigger off here. Okay, what should we do here? Clever name already taken. Is there any way for us to preview the elite versions of the enemies that might appear in the battle? Uh, I think the answer is no right now. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that personally, so... Um, if there's enough demand for that, we could definitely consider it in the pre-battle intro. Alright, 25-5. I'm going to put them on the middle floor. Let's hopefully not regret that. What did we get? Shattered Shell was our conscription noticed from a totally different clan what a cool what a cool artifact i like that 1320 sweep and he's only one capacity it's beautiful i don't know uh any slay plus three hmm i'll play him here maybe ah oh, it's not what i wanted to have discarded all right, well, we might as well get some more infused in this room, I suppose. Okay. Whoops, I'm in slow mode, speed it up. Okay, we did get... We can see this clergyman is bigger than the others, and he has been kind of infused by the pack shards. That's why he's got these kind of shardy visual effects on his legs. And it has a little star uh, to kind of indicate in his name that he is a different version. 
Looks like the main difference is he has rage and higher base attack as well, it looks like. So, and multi-strike, so pretty damn threatening in comparison. Uh, looks like we cannot kill him this turn down there, so that sucks. Uh, let's see what happens. All right, let's see. Shaheen asks, with all the work that's still being done to the DLC prior to official release, will there be any significant additions as compared to what we saw in the beta? Uh, well, I'd say there are a lot of things that are more polished now. We have redesigned a number of things uh, in response to feedback and based on kind of balance observations from the collected data from everybody who played uh, the, uh, the public test. Um, we're not like throwing in a bunch of new cards or anything like that to set expectations clearly, but I, I think uh, everyone who is interested in Monster Train will be pleased with the ultimate outcome. Like we're really trying to make it really well balanced and fix as many of the bugs as we possibly can. I can't wait to launch it. I'm super excited about it. So it's just gonna take a little more waiting. I know it sucks, but it's gonna take a bit more. All right, um, <clears throat> so I guess if we cast this, Echo Break uh, in this room up here, it's got five health. Okay, this clergyman also has a lot more health. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do we want to care? Maybe we'll just tank it with Shattered Shell and kill everybody here and gain his attack up. Maybe take one less. One less damage. That was interesting. So does this do damage? Does Echo Break do damage even if you have zero? Because I had zero charged echoes there a moment ago, right? And I casted it and dealt one damage and it gave me a charged echo. Is that working properly? All right, so you can see actually the train room's visuals are changing as we build up charged echoes within the room. Another thing that's unique to the Wormkin. All right, can we do anything here? Well, we can do that. Is that gonna keep him alive? Looks like it probably will. That is nice. Might as well do it again. Some, we have a bug here, something happening here, guys? I was expecting, or my misunderstanding, what's happening here? I was expecting Echo Infusion says extract one on it and we are not losing our charged Echoes. <laughs> Is this build bugged, or am I just completely misunderstanding how this works? All right, we might as well throw our train stewards in here. Oh my god. Carving Karuska. Karuska. I feel like I want to call it that. It's saving me. When a card with extract is played, gain one. My god. I forgot about that, but I love it. <laughs> okay. What do we want to do here? Well, let's kill off some of these guys for sure here. I think I'll put this on the boss. And this doesn't matter. Maybe we'll just cast it here to get another... Charge Deco. All right. Uh, well, let's see. Do do do. It's looking good, anyways. All right. Cool. Pew pew. <laughs> Gotta love that. All right. Cool. So one of the other big features that is in the Last Divinity DLC is something that we haven't seen yet. So if this is your first time seeing it, uh, there's a new button here that says Toggle Unit Essences. And this is related to a feature that can be seen in the Divine Temple, which we will have the, whoops, it's right here, the opportunity to go to at the next Ring of Hell right after this battle. And uh, it's called... Well, at least I think it's called this in the game. The dev team calls it Unit Synthesis. Uh, it's where you can actually take a unit card, you can distill it, purges it out of your deck, and then some ability of it gets put onto another card. So uh, whenever you're at a draft or something like that, you can click this, and for any unit cards, 
you can see what their essences are. So if we took the bog fly, which gets plus five attack per charged echo, and then we melted the bog fly down and combined them into another unit, that other unit would get plus five attack, or plus five health permanently as part of their base stats, and they would get that same trigger there. Um, part of what the worm tooth does also is one card in each draft pack will be infused. So if we want more infused, then we can go for this. This not only is infuse, it also has extract, which combos off our carving Karuska. I'm going to say it differently every time I read it out loud, just to hit every possible pronunciation. Which then gains us some additional things here. Kind of mitigates it. This seems interesting. I like echo transfer seems interesting. Let's give that a shot. Oh, and I guess just to look at all the cards. So we also have Echo, Snare, Consume. Consume is interesting from our uh, champion upgrade. Apply Reap 2 to enemy units. Which is damage per charged Echo. I don't know. I'm going Echo Transfer. Seems interesting. Do, do, do. All right. Daydagni. Question for Mark. When are you adding your cat to the game? He is not in this room today, surprisingly, uh, but perhaps he should have a cameo. You know, maybe in the Bone Dog event, my cat could also be there as an alternative card option uh, that does something else beneficial for you. I don't know. <laughs> I'd certainly like that. Get Chief in the game. All right. Uh, who else do we have? Allied Clan. So Mollusk Mage, plus 10 magic power. Helical Crystallis, 25 damage to the front enemy unit twice. And Energy Siphon is our infused with Spell Weakness, which we could make use of via Echo Break, it looks like, or Flash Freeze. Let's toggle our essences so we can see what Mollusk Mage does. Plus 5 attack, plus 3 health, and plus 10 magic power on this floor. So... You basically get everything that this unit does if you merge it into another one. I mean, we don't have any targets to merge stuff into except train stewards, though, right now. Uh, do we want more magic power? I guess magic power would affect a variety of things that we have. So does spell weakness, though. Eh, let's take Mollusk Mage, just for fun. Lily Pad 13, because the number of pack shards pertaining to each threat level varies every floor, is there any plan to add a clear indicator of how many pack shards will take you to each threat level? That is a detailed question, and it is true that that is how it works. Um, I don't know if we have any further plans to create more information on, on the screen to explain that, but if somebody else on the dev team wants to give a deeper answer who's thought about that problem more than I have, Please go ahead and chat, and I appreciate the backup. All right, do we want to go for the Stygian banner? Get more units that way, and I kind of want to do, or I want to consider merging units here uh, and the Merchant of Steel, or do we want gold and Merchant of Magic? You know, I, I just want to test out some of our new stuff, so I'm definitely going this way. Before we go to the Divine Temple, I'm going to go to the Merchant first and see what upgrades we have. So we've got Strength Stone, Echo Stone, Upgrade a unit with plus three attack per charged echo and speed stone. Okay, so we've got a Wormkin specific upgrade in here. Stygian Banner, Guard of the Unnamed, and Cold Salia. You can see what they do if you merge them together. But I'm kind of wondering if we can merge <coughs> Mollusk Mage into Guard of the Unnamed to create some kind of encant oriented blocker frontline blocker unit that also just happens to give us magic power that seems kind of interesting because it kind of mitigates one of the worst parts of moss mage which is you know super low health let's give it a shot okay so before we go to the merchant let's check out the divine temple uh so at every divine temple there are three things that you can do you can take you can take everything also. You can take all rewards here. The downside is, of course, you get pack shards for every reward, which increases the threat level of uh, both the next battle and all future battles. 
So we've got two spell upgrades. Let's look at those first. True Stone, upgrade a spell with plus 10 magic power and piercing for 10 pack shards. And we've got Value Stone, upgrade a spell to cost minus two ember. Yeah, well, we don't have anything that really costs much ember, so that doesn't really feel important to us. T plus 10 magic power and piercing. Maybe not bad, but hopefully we're going to have plus 10 magic power in a second on a lot of things. Because the other thing you can do is engage Pact. Sacrifice a unit to infuse its essence into another unit. Cost 25, though. Or it gives you 25 Pact shards, I should say. Well, let's try it. So you, again, here you can toggle them. You can see what everybody does conveniently. Um... But yeah, let's let's sacrifice Mollusk Mage and combine them into the Guard of the Unnamed. When you do this, for folks who haven't seen, there's an additional banner placed on the card. So Guard of the Unnamed plus Mollusk Mage. Uh, and then a new tooltip is on there showing what he's going to do. Um, we don't always put all of the text of what happens. So we're going to get plus 5 attack and plus 3 health as part of this. But the plus 10 magic power on the floor looks like we are not putting into the card. One, like... There's some challenges with too much text, and then the text has to shrink down. You know, I'm sure if you've played the game, you've seen some cards have more pressure in terms of having more text because they're more complicated. But, yeah, I, I think... Ooh, that was cool. Um, you know, on some cards, we don't repeat the entirety of all the text. So you do have to read the tooltip to remind yourself of what the plus mollusk mage is actually doing. All right, do we want to do anything else? Do we want to take true stone? I don't know. All right, Ramil WTF. Any plans on adding ways to increase the base echo capacity of a floor beyond four? I didn't see any in my limited beta time. That I don't know. So hopefully somebody, one of the one of the people on the design team in the chat, if you have an answer for that, uh, please post it. I'm happy to read it aloud. But uh, I do not know the answer to that. I think uh, given what we know about my skills in this game, let's not take <laughs> either of these two additional upgrades. Let's leave, let's stick with what we got, and let's head on. Dakarnik says, there's an artifact that does that, increases the base uh, number of charged echoes, and a card that does it. So there you go, there is. Thank you for answering. Penitent Prayers. We've got the Reconciler. Forged Disciple, we are at high threat level, which means it's highly likely that we will get uh, Pack Shard boosted enemies. We've got another trial, but yeah, I'm going to skip the trial. Unit drafts are definitely like, were like one of the lesser appealing trials to me personally in the past, but now with the ability to combine units together at the Divine Temple, they are way more interesting. All right, so we've got our Mollusk Mage Guardian double pack but even before playing him i'm gonna go with my echo right on the mid floor again who's gonna get me somebody who did he get me he got me horned warrior multi-strike 125 man this is an awesome artifact i'm loving this one the kind of uh slot machine aspect of it is awesome too all right 25 2 i know we recently redesigned this guy to give him multi-strike and changed his base stats uh and we've got our buddy here do, do, do. Can we? Are we going to be able to cast Echo Infusion even with no charged Echoes showing? I don't know. Maybe I'm going to set these guys up here. Let's give this a try. Is this going to work? No. So we cannot cast this. We don't have any charged Echoes. All right. And we'll train Steward Guard our Echo right. And that's all we can do right now. Exinate. Was the threat level icon changed? Yes, it was. I think to make it more thematic and to make it look, <laughs> to put it frankly, like less like a cell phone signal bar. I think that was part of it. Look at this little guy too. <laughs> I just noticed, I didn't notice when I cast him or summoned him that uh, Horned Warrior is so tiny. It's a tiny little guy. All right. No, we can't cast any of this stuff. We need uh, we need some infused here. All right, let's cast Forgone Power and hope that it discards Sinner's Burden. Yes! Okay, that was good. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. I feel like there's no downside to doing that. 
but we're not going to be able to cast... Uh? So, okay, why why can I cast this right now? So, I've, look, I've got one charged echo. Does, like, the infused aspect of this fire first or something like that? So that it becomes two and then it can extract two at that point? The infused happens first, Pyrofox says. Okay, well, there you go. There's the answer. So let's give it to our little buddy right there. He can make more use of it for multi-strike. And... Okay, there. Let's get that money. Ooh, we do have a powered up Forge Disciple here who has sweep, which I didn't notice. Dangerous for our back line there. Okay. We can see we are getting the effect of Mollusk Mage here. Um, he's got his plus 10 magical power on this floor. So we are getting that. Of course, we can't actually make use of that this turn. Do, do, do. Make sure that guy gets killed at least. There we go. Well, that answered that question. Okay, well, we've got a broken memories pack pointlessly. All right, what else do we want to do here? Ooh, I like that we're getting 13 damage out of this. That is nice for sure. I wish we had drawn more of our infused stuff here. Let's kill one of those guys. Let's put both of these on him, I guess. Might as well cast that. All right, that worked out. Can I explain to them why some of the monsters appear super large? Well, some of the creatures are increasing in size when they are affected by the pack shard. So their power level increases. So if it's a pack shard boosted enemy, it has different stats, different abilities, and it's bigger. And it has this kind of like purpley, crystally effect to show that it's been affected by the pack shards. All right, what did we get in our clan pack? Bounding Echoes. Apply Infuse to cards in hand. We can get a lot more Infuse that way. We got Shelter. So consume card. Apply Armor 2. Two armor per uh, Charged Echo. That's interesting for sure. And we can get it back with our Champion ability, which we have not really made use of. And an Infused. Apply Reap 2. I'm going to try Shelter. Give that a shot. We didn't get any units in either draft here. I don't think we need more Flash Freeze. Helical Crystals is a bit better with our, uh, what's it called? Guard of the Unnamed, boosted by Mollusk Mage. So if we cast this in that room, we get an extra 20 damage out of it, which is nice. But an infused and an attuned Titan's Gratitude. I mean, the Mollusk Mage upgrade counts as magic power, right? So I think this greatly boosts the damage potential of that so why don't we try it let's try titan's gratitude we're gonna have a big deck here okay we have another divine temple it, there's not always a divine temple uh like all of the map you know there's some rules to it but it's not always a divine temple here in between ring one and ring two for example so you're not guaranteed to always get those but we did in this particular run all right do we want to go to a spell merchant? I feel like we've got all this stuff that costs one and zero. It doesn't really feel super valuable right now to me. So I'm going to go this way. Well, I mean, so if we take another unit, we can get a Wormkin unit, but we can't synthesize. Well, I could synthesize a train steward into it. That always is a little bit of a feels bad moment, though. All right, let's look at the unit first. So we got Kinhos, Carapace, and Keeper of Echoes. Kinhos Carapace, when played, gain plus 10, plus 10, and plus 1 capacity per charged echo. Keeper of the Echoes, an Inspire trigger. Triggers when you gain charged echoes on this floor once per charged echo, which we have a decent, you know, we've got some extra bonus ways to gather that via carving. Let me try to think of another pronunciation I haven't tried yet. Karuska. Let's try that. Nah, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> plus one, plus one to all friendly units when that happens. Uh, 
plus one, plus one to all friendly units. I don't know. I mean, I see why that doesn't sound that inspiring. <laughs> doesn't sound too big. Some of these cards are new to people, and people are commenting they've never seen it before. Well, that's because they're from the Wormkin. You know, we. I mean, all these cards were in the public test. We may have redesigned parts of them, but... Um, all right. Uh, let's just try Keeper of the Echoes. Let's give it a shot, trying some of this new stuff. Let's check out the Horde. Classics, Volatile Gauge. Probably not, considering all of our cards are already low cost, essentially. And Vapor Funnel. Not super synergistic or anything, but might as well take it. I'm going with that. Let's do the Concealed Caverns before we go to the Divine Temple. An old classic, the Cave of a Thousand Eyes. Okay, do we want to use coins to try to gain an artifact? I feel like we probably should, because we are not going to a merchant right now. Of course, we didn't get one. Let's try again. Nope. Hey, Mark of a Champion. When played, your champion gains 50% attack. So that'll give us 12.5. Probably going to get rounded up. We'll find out. Yeah, let's take that. It's nice. We deemed you worthy. Thank you, Cave. Lagaya Croyd says, Does the last divinity still cleanse all debuffs every time they damage it? I don't know. Dakarnix, can you answer that one, please? All right, at our temple here. Upgrade a spell to gain purge and cost minus one. A purge stone. Value stone, minus two. Purge and minus one. Do we want anything to have that? You want to get rid of something permanently? One of our spells? Mm, I don't know. Maybe an echo break, but I don't know if that's worth 10 echoes. And we can't engage the pact. Right? No, we got the trade stewards. Should we make our keeper of echoes beefier? Oh, there's a sorting bug. The sacrifice button is sorting on top of the lore. There, I'll send that to the, the dev team. Whoop. All right. That's how we report bugs on the dev team, too. Press F8. All right. Uh, do I want to actually do this? Well, considering I don't think my stream's going to reach the end of the run, let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to put a train steward on the Keeper of Echoes just to buff his stats some. So let's do that. And we will attach him. It's not very exciting. Just increases his base stats. But hey, better than nothing. All right. We did just take a bunch of them, though, so we are going to have extreme threat going into uh, this battle against Talos. We'll see if we can win. We probably are going to lose, I would guess, but let's see how our strategy goes. So extreme threat level. And the Talos variant we have is the Protective Sin. Enemy units enter with armor 5. Talos attacks every turn and pushes units back. The pushback is definitely dangerous for us because we've got this kind of weak frontline strategy here. So, all right. Now I'm wishing I had the read that in more detail and had the piercing. I wish I had taken that uh, spell upgrade previously. What do I want to do here? Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't know, should I put the Echo right on the top floor now, maybe? To be under a bit less threat? Hmm, I'm gonna try it. We're gonna see the effect of the Ember Drain change now, so... He was not dazed. He did get 13 extra attacks, so... Mark of the Champion does round up, confirmed. Um, <clears throat> but we do have Ember Drain run. What do we get? Siren of the Sea, another encant trigger oriented character costing zero well maybe i'll put the siren of the sea here i'm thinking on the bottom maybe the mid floor i'll play the keeper of echoes and the guard of the unnamed both of them let's try that All right. 
right, what should we do here? So we've got the nice bonus of magic power, so we can kill off the Discipled Foot Soldier here. 14 damage off of Talos, though. Ouch. We can throw the Train Steward Chump Block. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, I don't know if... Mm -mm -mm -mm. I think I want to do that to guarantee the kill here. And then... Okay. I guess I'll do this and hope that it discards Flash Freeze. Yes. All right, that's good. All right, so we do have some increased size guys here. So like the Trusted Priest has Spell Shield uh, in addition to the five armor he got from Talos and has higher stats, higher healing. And there's the Sweep Forge Disciple here. All right, looks like we are pretty good up there. Echo Break. We should probably kill this guy off, I'm guessing. Just go ahead and do that. This is, guy's got Encant plus one attack. All right. Can we do anything else here? We can chump block with Train Steward here again. And we might as well cast Broken Memories. Guess it doesn't, wait, well, what is it? No. Hmm, maybe I should have cast it there. Yeah, I should have cast it there for better Encant. <clears throat> Okay, so yep, the magic power from the Mollusk Mage Synthesis is increasing Titan's Gratitude to be significantly more damage, which is fantastic. We're definitely going to want to cast that, but in what order are we going to want to do these things in? Hmm. I guess I'll put it on this guy here. The Echo Infusion. All right, this is yeah, it's feeling pretty good overall. See how this actually goes, though. Okay. I'm thinking that we should try to get something infused in this room. But I don't know. Maybe we should just keep buffing this room. Yeah, maybe it's okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go for that then. Let's just keep these guys going. All right, what do I want to do? Keeper of Echoes is getting big. Yeah, my other consume spells at the bottom of the deck. There we go, we finally get it. Shelter. Apply armor two per thing of a bobber. We can cast that twice this turn, it looks like, which is interesting. Let's go ahead and do that. No? Did I misread that? Where did it put it? On top of my draw pal. We'll get it next turn. <clears throat> All right, how much is Shell going to help me here? Let's see. Hmm. 
not that much. We can kill this guy with our Titan's Gratitude that's boosted up. So I assume we need to do that. Probably f Flash Freezing. Uh, we can also Train Steward. I think we should definitely Titan's Gratitude this guy. What's going to get me more? He's only going to survive one extra attack with that. That's probably better. 430. Alright, I think we're going to win this battle. Looking good. All right, I'm just going to end. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Cool. Well, I think I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you everybody for joining me. Uh, that was another preview of the upcoming The Last Divinity DLC for Monster Train. New Wormkin Clan, new final boss, unit synthesis, new upgrades, new Concealed Caverns events, which we didn't see, a bunch of balance changes. It's got all kinds of stuff. I really think it's uh, fundamentally changes the game in a lot of really awesome ways. So um, super excited to get it out to everybody as soon as we can. Uh, so thanks again for being here today, and I'm sure I'll see you again on more developer streams in the near future. Have a good day. Bye for now.